Hello and welcome back to Two Things Today. I am Self-Love Mirror Mirror Challenge about story writing and also our Talk Tuesday is today right now. So this is a really powerful session. Um, really glad that you guys are here. Yesterday was really great. So yesterday we met the mirror. Today you're going to meet yourself. The power of your story. Everyone on this planet needs to know their own story. They need to give it value, love, a life to fully breathe, and to be a part of humanity. Your story does matter, and you absolutely matter. None of us were born with a smooth, easy life. So we all have a story, even the smoothest, such as um, if you were pampered, like if you can imagine the royals. Even they have their own issues, right? So no one gets away unscathed without anything. We all want to be loved. We want to be heard. We want to be listened to. We want to be nurtured. So we're going to go through what's really important about you and your story and how you can raise and how this is important for you to move forward in your um in your life so that it's an aspect of your self-love, your awareness of who you are. Absolutely, we have to know who we are and our story. One, because we're getting out of some of it. Two, because we're using some of it to enrich our glorious life. And three, when we're some of those that we don't need to enrich our life, guess what? We get to step up on that story and climb over that wall. Because it's one of those places working with the inner child, the parts work, all of that that gets completely healed and moved away. So what does your story look like? Oh, besides being Mia Signs, this is Lori Montre too. You want to Hello. say Lori? Yeah. And I just want to say, Mia, thank you for really putting this event together because it is so important and um, such a such a gift. Self love being the foundation of you know all of all of our work, the the self love piece and the nervous system. Um, and if I can, you know, I, this is the story, right? Is something that I also, uh, when we're working in our our different programs as well in the emotional eating program, we start with our food story. And mm -hmm. I always tell people, you know, we're not doing that so that we can, you know, say, oh, poor me look at all these bad things. I'm such a victim, right? It's never about that, but it is about learning, um, you know, why do I have some of these challenges in my life that maybe don't suit me? Well, looking back at my story and understanding their roots can really bring me the compassion that I need, right? It's a loving place to start from that, oh, it makes sense. Of course, you know, these challenges would arise from this story. Again, not from a victim mentality, but from a, oh, wow. And then we can also see this is, I'm so powerful. Like I created this, right? And which means I can create something else when I understand how, how this works and our story helps us, us do that. And then finally, I love how our stories tie us back to our gifts, right? As we're writing and thinking about our stories, there's some stuff in there that that's difficult. There's, you know, but there's also those glimpses of our gifts. And I remember doing my story, I had a couple of incidences where I was a little girl, like, uh, I think maybe around nine or 10 years old, and we had a snow day. But for whatever reason, I woke up that morning, and I put on this dress, and this little purple quilted uh, vest jacket thing. And I was just feeling myself for some, which was very unusual for my that uh, 10 year old. And I found out we had a snow day and I stood there at the window for like an hour. Or so I was playing records and I was watching the snowfall and I felt so connected to something. I didn't know what it was. And when I went back to my story, I'd forgotten all about that experience, but going back and, and relive with them, like there's something really special in that moment, something really special about me. Some, uh, somehow I was connected with the, with nature and the universe. And it really served as a springboard to, I want some of that piece of me back, yeah. right? That fought really powerful and authentic. And so I love when we go into the story for all of these reasons, but especially to find some of these really gifted places that um, we want to tie back into and 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 reunite with some of those parts that little girl that you just shared those are the moments that we as grown-ass adults excuse me we get to create for ourselves yeah that's magic right that's exactly magic. what it makes it was, me feel i was like. magic that day yeah yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. And we only can do it when we feel happy, safe, loved, all of that, right? That was really beautiful that you got to experience that at such a young age. And that is part of the story, discovering not just, of course, the negative that people want to talk about because they need to heal it, but what about the good things? Those are the things that you all have heard about in the ancestral tree, um, in the dream, believe, create any of this stuff that's brilliant like that needs to be brought forward. Why? Because that's the core of who you are to you. And that's the beauty. Oh, I love it. Um, you know, it was interesting when you were talking like that, I wrote down, create an exit plan. And I thought, oh, you better add more onto that because people are going to think, oh, what are you talking about an exit plan? Create an exit plan from the life you live into the life you want to live. Now, we're talking about our story now. We will be on Thursday because we want tomorrow to talk about it so that then it works into our homework or our discussion. Um, the dream, believe, create process, creating your future story. So right now, it's really important about our story now. And let's go through all the little steps that you may want to think about that you can use to pull up information, memory, joy, and sometimes sorrow, you guys. So <laughs> ground yourself into a space where you're not interrupted, even if it's for 30 minutes. Remember, these 30 or 20 minutes or 10 minutes are yours, a time you're never going to get back. So be that little girl like Lori was at the window in the in the snow, playing her records and digging life. I mean, literally, when we go back into our story, it's not about the trauma. It's about the story. Okay. Yeah. And so any trauma that comes up, remember to push that aside. It is part of the story. If you need support, ask that too. What, you know, after you're doing it the next time we meet, just say, hey, Mia, hey, you know, and if Lori pops on, hey, guys, we, we, yeah. we got some stuff here we need to clear out. And that's yeah, okay. Mia, when you say set aside the trauma, you, you do want us to engage with it, to write it down, to do. allow it to be, yeah. But when I mean set aside the trauma, I mean, we have done so much work as individuals growing that we don't have to carry that anchor with us. We can carry the movie of it. We can carry the essence of it, right? But there's a difference between actually carrying a 50 pound salt, well, it's probably 250 pounds solid anchor made of steel, right? That goes down into the into the depths of, of the ocean. We don't need to carry yeah. that part with us. We want yeah. to carry the information that's going to guide us to our greatness. Yeah. <laughs> and that can be tricky, you know, if it's something that we've really not processed yet, um, we may not be able to to do that right. very smoothly. And that's why you're saying, if that's a challenge for you, then there's something there and, and we can support you to, to be able to this be that observer of it, as opposed to taken over by yeah. it. This, this process that we're going to do, this story is profound because it's about you, right? mind's about me and so in that beauty we get to be and do and have all we want when I say lie down the the trauma I just mean if you're able to stay out of the trauma when you think of something do that and and just take the feelings of that hurt little girl right for your inner child but be the grown-up adult like you are with any uh, niece, nephews, your own children that you take care of or that you see, you want to love and nurture them, honor that story without um, without falling down, right? Does that make sense? Did I say that right, Lori? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so beginning uh, when we begin to write our journey, it's it is. Remember, guys, it's about everything, some things you won't remember. We just don't remember what we've lived, you know, some of us 40 years, 30 years, you know, 50 and then and on up. So that's a lot of stuff to retain and it's okay. Um, so in, I want you to reflect on the significance of your personal life, right? So when you're thinking about that, what's important to you 
that is significant that you want to have others know or you want to be put into your story? The power of storytelling moves individuals just like you are moved with stories. We heard yesterday of my story from 9-11 and also from being hit on the head and in a wheelchair. It's in the book that you guys are doing for the I Am Self Love Challenge. That was a story. Did that story keep me down or was I able to at some point be able to move through it, get out of the wheelchair, somehow heal my brain so that I could function again and be the woman that's in front of you? rather than the invalid who literally couldn't do anything. To this day, it was like the beginning of this year, my son said to me, my oldest one, I thought you just didn't care. And I said, baby, it's not that I didn't care, it's that I couldn't function. And I tried so hard to not embarrass you all. So our story is important, right? That's what gave me the strength to even go through cancer when you think about it. Mm -hmm. So that, that's powerful. Things, one of the things, if it, if it seems overwhelming, because sometimes we hear that, that, oh my gosh, I don't know where to start. There's just, you know, we can, you can think about it in age groups, you know, from infancy, whatever, toddler, and then go five to eight, eight to 12, you know, mm -hmm. and whatever makes sense for you to kind right. of break it down. So it doesn't feel like this huge task. Where do I start? Oh, that was then. So having a chronological um, guide. Uh, the other thing is don't worry about the truth. It's your experience. That's what the truth is. So sometimes we'll get caught up. Oh, was that, you know, was it, well, maybe that was just my perception. Well, okay. If it that's was your perception, story. perfect. That's your yeah. story. Yeah. Um, so don't get caught up on the truth. That's yeah. not something that we need to worry about because we're really interested in your experience more than, we you know, we're not writing a news report where we have to fact check and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So like Lori's saying, reflect on the significance of those personal stories. Um, there's a variety of questions you can ask yourself. And it's not about, is it true? Is it not true? It's like, what was it like when I was 10 years old at birthday parties, right? Mm -hmm. or, or say you uh, had a horse growing up. What was that like, right? That's a story. Um, how were you in school? Did you win any awards like in speech or writing and go off to competitions or sports? That's part of your story, right? Were you one who was scared of life or did you run at it full force? That's your story. That's your story. And it's not about digging up the horrific things. Remember, this is about you. This is, so if my story, if I'm to tell my story in, in two minutes with you guys, I was a little girl who had a twin sister who died at birth. It forced my birth. My whole life, I, I thought about her. I wondered where she was, you know, I knew she was gone, but I thought about her. Um, my sister older than me, and this is a fact checking thing that we don't even need to worry about, but I'm going to share it here. My sister older than me said, you know, mom was a liar. So we don't even know what went on there when you were born. And I said to her and I was little, I was, well, I was maybe in junior high. And I said to her, you know what? It really doesn't matter what mom said. It's what I felt. It's what the mm -hmm. experience was and how it left me. And we all learn that as yeah. we get older. Yeah. So, so enjoy your story what's coming up for you that's really beautiful um and what do the the concepts of telling your story mean to you does it have value you absolutely have value so this is an aspect of it is pulling forth your worth your value to see how powerful you can be this is the story of you moving forward in life and you can use it as a little memoir you can use it as your healing journey. You can use it any way you want because it's about you. It's whatever's in your heart that wants to come out. And you get to explore these things, these memories that are yours. They Some of them could be turning points that led you to where you are today. Those are the cool things to remember. There's a story 
how I I share with a few people who are like me, who are incredibly creators, like boom, 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 from very young. And, and I have brought up and talked to some people about this this year, how I didn't like, I had to get used to that I was a jack of all trade. There's that saying, jack of all trade, master of none. I didn't like that word, master of none, because I knew things proficient enough to do really well at them. Or if I didn't like it, I'd move on to something else. But guess what, guys? It led me to who I am today as a coach and everything else, right? Because I've been through so much. Those who seek me out for my business knowledge, it's because I had 18 companies. It's because I understand that. So you guys have stuff along your path that are so important that you're not even identifying. And that's what this is all about. This is about recognizing your greatness. So this is not ancestral tree or anything, but this is bigger. This is you. Everyone should have a memoir of sorts. And if you're a coach, you should have a coaching book or a healing book out there. Why? Because it's powerful for you, one, to know who you are and for the world to know who you are. Your story does matter. And in a day and age when things can be produced easily, don't laugh at the idea. Everyone deserves to have their story known and heard. That's okay, Michelle. That's all right. You can, you can watch the rerun, honey. It's okay. Thank you. All right. So do we have questions about story? What it feels like? where it takes us. How do you get started? Have any of you done something like this before? I wonder. Yeah. This is and why I'm bringing this because it's, it's so important to know your story. Yeah. And even if you have, you know, there's always a new layer um, that, that you're, that's available to you. This is something, you know, imagine people spend years writing their memoir. So if you have spent a little time here and there, that's wonderful, but I'm going to guess that there's probably room for more reflection and just to take it in, absorb it a little bit deeper. Um, so I think it, it is worthwhile to do certainly more than once. And, you know, some of these people will want, some people and some stories that get written, people are definitely wanting to have them published. Not everybody does. The value is in the writing. The mm -hmm. value is in opening you up. That's where the value is. Seeing who you are. Having a goal to express yourself where no one else ever listened. That's the value of, of writing your own story. Really, really important. Uh, mm -hmm. Use my story remind me of oh, see that's really important very very important is to use your story to move forward who you are how how yeah. yeah but actually writing it out like we talk about um so I'm in the middle finally after four years um all the doctors the first time around with cancer said write your story because I had a miracle healing and then it came back and they're like, you still need to write your story. And I'm like, I'm not ready to write my story. And then I got that cleared away. And then it came back again to find out that I had a rogue gene that was going crazy and bringing the cancer back all the time until I took some drastic measures that I didn't want to take until I realized I needed to. So I'm writing my story too. Not just because I've been told by doctors and everything and people who know my story, but because I get to look at my life. I get to re-experience it. We live in it, right? And so we don't get to experience all the nuances, the juiciness until we take the time. That's why your story is so important. Yeah. Let's see. We have some... Uh... That's good. I, I don't know, uh, M, I don't know which, uh, what your name is except for M, but yes, that's very important as a coach or mentor to use your story. Very important. And to teach people to know their own story too. Yeah. Okay, so 
now is time, right, Lori, to undo the uh, undo the mics and to talk about yesterday or your story. Uh, yesterday was meeting the mirror. So in the mirror, up come stories. What was that like for you to meet the mirror? Do you see how all of this stuff is, and I'm sure Eileen knows because she's been through programs with Lori and I, all of this stuff is intertwined for our own growth, for our own benefit. Yes, Allison, you too. <laughs> so what was meeting? I'm, I'm curious about the mirror. Who met the mirror for the first time and who met it for the hundredth or the thousandth or the two thousandth time? And how did your, if you've met it that many times, how, tell us how your experience is different now than when you first started. Remember, this is like a story. This is sharing your, your greatness, your triumphs, your going under, your coming back up and rising. Mm -hmm. You guys, while we're thinking about it, um, heard from someone yesterday who was reflecting on just that very question, reflecting, oh, I like that, but <laughs> she was reflecting on that question and she said how at first it was painful to look in the mirror because what she saw she was disgusted by, mm -hmm. which is hard to, you know, especially this beautiful soul, like how could she ever be uh, anything less than thrilled that she, she gets to be this person, right? But um, that she was disgusted by what she saw in the mirror and how painful it was to even catch her reflection um, and reflecting on now saying, walking by, mirrors in general and especially doing this exercise being excited to come and be with herself and to see herself and appreciate herself and just you know open a space to be genuinely with herself and that was um obviously right very very moving to hear that that much change had occurred in a matter of 12 13 months it's amazing. It's amazing. It is. Yeah. Yesterday I mentioned that for myself, and I'm sure for many, we don't even know what's inside of us. Yeah. We don't know what's inside of us. I used to say, who's in there? You know, because I knew what I was out like on the outside. I was an athlete. I did all the sports. Every season I was into a sport. But who was I on the inside? It was too scary. I didn't even know to look until I got a little bit older. Yeah. And then it's yeah. like, who is that? Who is that? Yeah. I don't feel we it. We know who we're told we should be, right? right? We know what society has told us or individuals in our in our small circles, what they've, you know, and they've done it in subtle ways. Maybe they didn't sit you down and say, okay, here's who you, uh, here's who you need to be in order to be well received in this world that, that you're in um that might may or may not have happened right but that doesn't have to happen for us to get the cues the frown the um just the the way we didn't get you know a, a tender touch or or something else all of that we are so in tune with all of that when we are young because our brains are sponges trying to figure out and make sense of this world that we're living in and so you were told in so many ways exactly who you should be um, and, you know, what would get you the furthest, what would be the most beneficial for you. And so if we don't do this work, it's very, very, very rare for someone to have been taught and, and resourced to be able to connect with themselves and, and understand who they are. That's why in the academy, we have two important foundations. We have this foundation of discovering the authentic self finding out who you are because in the academy we're going to take you through and we're going to teach you how to create the things in your life that you want whether it's certain health career financial security um spirituality relationships of all kinds and if you're going to create those things you better damn well know who you are and what you want those things to be. Because a lot of times people are great at creating something, but then they get to that place and they're like, wait a minute, this isn't making me happy. My whole life, I thought when I got to this place, you know, I'd be happy, but it's because it wasn't authentic. 
So before we're going to teach you how to, to create these things in your life, we've got to connect you with your greatness, your authentic self, because your authentic self has the clarity. What do I really want? What will actually be fulfilling? And it knows the way to get there. It knows how to, how to create it. And so that's why it's such a foundational piece in the academy before we get to all the other things. Yeah. The other foundation, of course, being the nervous system. And in the uh, Mirror Mirror book that those who are uh, doing the challenge concurrent, you know, because we're, we're doing Talk Tuesday on the challenge today, I just wanted to point out that this was this was all thought together, bringing in the story. Chapter three, crossing the bridge from longing to having. Loveless, and I'm going to read just a couple of paragraphs. Lovelessness is a deadly condition. So we're using lovelessness in the story here. Um, here's the capital T for truth. You can actually die of lovelessness and its component and its uh, component parts self-hatred and loneliness. If the pain doesn't get you, the pacifiers will. The exhaustion will, the addiction will. But listen to this, guys. But don't take but don't take my word for it. My word won't do you a bit of good. Only one thing will, your first hand experience. So what I want to take you or talk to you about briefly about your story in in the mirror mirror book. A lot of people don't like themselves, right? This is why we do self-love. We find the value, our worth, and we hold it up. So I'm using the word, a life that loves you back. So a lovelessness was an example. But the most important thing for you to do is to understand that. And it even says here in this book, it says right here, but don't take my word for this. Remember, this is about Anything in life that is negative in your experience can be a deadly position, uh, a disposition or whatever. And then the positive, the greatness, like if you're writing your story about more fun things, that's the life within you. And again, it's your firsthand experience that most people push aside. This is what's important about you is your value is you lived your life. You did these things. It's time for you to stand up for yourself and say, hey, it may not have always been good, may not have always been bad, but this is my life and look at it and love it. From there, growth happens, change happens. You've opened a huge, not a single door, but like French doors, you've opened two big doors and it's all waiting for you on the other side. Beautiful. So uh, one of the things um, that I'm going to be bringing to you guys between now and the beginning of January is a writing program about your stories. And you can get them published through my micro publishing company. So um, if you're interested, just watch out for that stuff. It's going to be coming around the pipelines. And we also have, Lori and I want to share that for the Academy this year, so the first year that we had the Academy, it had gone through a cycle of testing stuff out and it's lock solid strong. And we raised the price or we put the price at 4444 because we believe in the angels. This is an eight month program. You have several programs and they're not just the greatest you. Yeah, we really love it. And some other stuff too. And also a second edition for those who are coming back who have done the Academy, just so you all know. Um, there's more added stuff in there for this the, the second level. So for Black Friday, and it's already in effect now, it's already up on the Greatest You Academy. Mia website. couldn't wait. I don't I trust couldn't. her with Christmas presents with nothing. She got so excited. She was like, oh yeah, Black Friday. <laughs> I don't see so we slashed and, and we've been filling the, um, for what we can take each time. And it's not Every month, it's like every six months, we'll open up the academy. And so it's at 2222. So it's half the price. Um, and it'll go through to Black Friday and then through that Sunday. And we just want people to be able to experience the academy. Um, many have jumped in at the 4444. 
Uh, I've taken, um, Lori and I have taken one of our writers who's 80, amazing. She came through the Academy, but her dream thing was to write her book and get it published. It's been the best thing to do. Hers is a children's book. I got her an artist. You know, I, there were 30 people that applied. I had to pick through them. Children's book with a deep message. We, yeah, it was a really, it was, a, it was about nightmares for children and how to get through them and see that it really isn't always a nightmare, which we can use in our everyday life. So this is, you know, like all the things that we think are spooky that are going to jump out from behind the wall at us aren't necessarily that. So just sharing this so that people can get prepared. Black Friday's coming. I was like, it doesn't have to be for 24 hours or 48 hours. Let's start in the month of November. So, mm -hmm. so that's, that's there for you. Um, your yeah, so story. anybody who's here and interested in self-love, I just want to say like, this is what we're giving you is like, if you could imagine the whole cake, this is like a, a bite, you know, of what, what is in the Academy as far as self-love. It's, um, the 12 modules that that's what you can think of as a master's degree in yourself. And it's the 12 modules online with video lessons, meditations. Um, we give you access to another course called ready for divine love connection, which is all about how to create relationships that are very authentic and connected and, um, uh, very di divine. Essentially, we give you access to a lot of other things. And then we coach you live um, every every other week, essentially. And that's a really important aspect for you to be able to integrate what you're learning in the program and really to be able to, you know, take your hand and um, make this material, this knowledge that you're gaining. OK, how do I bring it into my life? How do I make my dream come true, whether it is, you know, like um, the beautiful um, and talented Claire, a, a book or a relationship for another or, you know, whatever it is. So do yourself a favor and really just think about this. OK, um, if you're somebody who's considering um, joining the Academy and you have some questions, you want to make sure that it is a good fit for you. Me and I have opened some time on our calendar to talk to you about that. Um, and we're going to send the links for that in along with this replay and in future replays so that you can, you know, have a little support and help. And and if we didn't think it was a good fit for you, I think we would definitely tell you that because we want everyone to, to be successful. Obviously, we want it to to be something that's um, a really good fit. So, you know, I think um, we'd definitely be able to to help you and and make that decision. But that, that is available to you right now for a short time, yeah. just for yeah. these couple of weeks until Thanksgiving. So that's two and a half weeks. Well, two, two weeks, essentially. And, and it'll be in the email today starting to run the, the link to sign up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. and it's, it's a powerful experience. And so we're here to change lives. And... Um, like the woman that I was talking about earlier with the mirror to go from the experience of, oh, I feel I can barely say it, but I feel disgusted when I look at my reflection to I seek it out because I'm so in love with myself. That's a really beautiful transformation. Most people <laughs> are frustrated with their reflection in the mirror. It's yeah. really a hard. That's why the mirror work is the number one besides the inner child, the mirror work. So the mirror work opens you up. Like I tell people, it's the experience of your of you connecting to your soul. It's not a mistake when they talk about the eyes are the windows to our soul. When we look in the mirror and say, I love you without our name, because we've incarnated many times. So it's a distraction right? Because soul knows itself as love rather than could be Rebecca, Sarah, Bob, Frank, Mia, all in a, you know, however, however a lot, many times I've incarnated. The point is, is cutting through and in there you journal it because in there things come out, even if it's, I hate myself. That's a lie. I don't love myself. You need to know where you stand and don't be afraid because this is where we move forward. As we open up, our stories come out, our shadows come out, work needs to be done. It's the fastest opener. And then that's where the inner child process that I do 
and uh, we've created that it's also in the academy. That's where that comes through to really ignite your stories within you and to heal them. When you're standing there in a visualization process and you're taking care of your younger self and nurturing and loving her or him to the point of craziness, Mm -hmm. what happens love prevails stories crack wide open the energy of despair leaves and the openness of love fills and that's where we get to see I love that damn little girl me with my long hair love that little girl mm -hmm. I didn't love her until recently and I've been teaching this for years I thought I did yeah well there's always a, a new yeah. layer to 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 bring in as with yeah. someone last night who was sharing you know that they've been doing um the parts work and ha was in the grocery store we're working on her challenges with food she was in the grocery store and her inner child came up and wanted to you know buy some things that she knew really didn't serve her and for the first time she saw the the this little one this pigtail this rebellious little thing and she looked and she saw a real visual of her and she was like I love that <laughs> little girl you know whereas in the past she's like oh I'm so frustrated I'm so you know didn't recognize that the some of those urges were coming from the inner child right and so just hating it and hating a part of herself not really identifying with it but then connecting with this little rebellious part she was like how to the yes that's me that that little rebel um and so when we learn to bring those parts in and and instead of shunning them and um you know hating them and telling them to shut up you know bringing in take bringing in the power of that little rebel who is so strong and will say i'm getting these needs met so yeah. you can figure out how to meet them one way or another but i'm getting them met and and to meet that part with uh, love and and excitement about wow I like that part of me for the first time it's pretty yeah. fun it, it's beautiful I had an inner child moment last night that was really beautiful um I I bought these chocolate covered rock candy so they look like rocks but when you bite them inside there's chocolate and they're multicolored and it was for this Thanksgiving thing that I'm going to do making it look like a terrarium it's a dessert and um and taking it to somebody's house and so I opened up the thing of the of the of the um because I was like that's a bucket list for me I don't know if I've ever had that and so I took a few out and put them on a thing and I just sat there and I was getting into that space of the younger me and just going this is really fun it's not about eating a pound of chocolate rocks because that that didn't take place it was about the experience of doing something that I had always wanted to do when I was little and doing it now I had the most euphoric experience during it I told my husband about it we're, we're in different uh, houses in different parts of the country right now we're going to see each other for Christmas and um and I told him about it I said this was so powerful for me and what I feel inside is that there's so much melted away because my my childhood was very, even though we had money, it didn't seem that way. We were very deprived, very restricted on everything. And so I actually went to bed early last night and I think I slept um, 13 hours. I did go get up to go to the bathroom, but that was a story that was broken right? That was a story of this little girl never got the chocolate rocks that were bought at Knott's Berry Farm when I was little. See, there it's coming up. They didn't come up last night. And I always wanted them. Always. <laughs> my whole life. And I'm like 10 times the age of that little girl now, you know? So it's a beautiful thing to experience it. That's a story, you guys. It's true. But that's also a story. See, I got to love on myself in a different way. Everybody does it. And when I was doing that last night, I didn't think of Lori because I'm in her Freedom from Emotional Eating program. <laughs> but I also recognize that this was an aspect I needed and wanted to experience. And so it was done with maturity rather than consuming the whole thing. It was just a little bit. So 
our stories are so important. They open us up and take us also back to that. That was a, believe it or not, that was a bucket list thing for me. That's why I told my husband. I said, and if I ever forget that I had those, you're going to remind me that I did because I don't want to do that again <laughs> just once, you know, because we all are trying to do what's best for us. So my story had a full circle there. What does your story look like, right? So spend time going over and pulling out nuggets for your story, and then you can put it all together. And if it's way too much for you to write it all out, which is okay, at least you have a storyline to begin with of things that are important about you. Beautiful. Okay. Anything else we want to announce or share or advertise? I wanted to or... say thank you to the dozens and dozens of people who are participating in the challenge um, through the replays because this time doesn't necessarily suit their schedule. Just wanted you guys to know that we're we're seeing that you guys are here and appreciating your comments and other things that you're doing to participate, even though you're not live on the calls. That's awesome. I think in some ways it might be harder to participate that way. So I really just commend all the, the effort for, for all of you. And we see you, we know that you're there and you're watching. So we're excited about that. And although a lot signed up, we don't know exactly who on YouTube is watching. So don't think yeah. we're watching you, but I <laughs> say Lori is so cute. She watches our, our counter on the, on the YouTube. I love it. I just love that. Yeah, we will. We want to always make sure we're bringing this stuff that's pertinent. That's yeah. yes. Okay. This is on their minds. Okay. Let's create this for them. Um, so it's really important. And, and your feedback is always very, very welcome as far as, you know, this opened up this for me, because if it opened up that for you and you want to hear some more about anything in particular, of course it did for somebody else too. And so um, that's how, you know, we try to structure our, our talks and our offerings based on what would serve most. So keep that in mind, know that we're super open to what, what you're needing. Um, and we look forward to more interaction. Thank you guys for those, um, for everybody who, you know, sends, takes the time to send in an insight that they had or something like that, that really helps us tailor things to, to meet the need. And we do respond on, on the emails back to you. So. Yeah. And the Facebook group is of course, always a great place to, to come get support and, and guidance and all of that. And all of that is on your letters that you're getting in the email um, with the YouTube channel and the group, because those are two good resources. You'll get to see things firsthand if you are on the YouTube channel and then also in the group. Right, yeah. Yeah. So beautiful. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to turn off the recorder. And remember, we'll see you tomorrow because tomorrow are the concepts moving forward with how not just your story is valuable, so important. It's who you are. But now we also then get to take the mirror, mirror part, the self-reflections and move it forward into the dream, believe, create process, which is tomorrow. We also have deep pockets in there. I can't remember. Maybe that's five. Maybe it's switched around, but we will get to that as well. Deep pockets is when you have more or less that feeling that you've fallen and you can't get up like you're doing really well. And then all of a sudden you're not, and you're like, what is going on with me? So it's how you get out of those spaces where you've fallen and you feel like you can't get up. Okay. Sounds wonderful. Thank you, everyone. Um, Lori and I are meeting for a meeting. So um, hold on, I'm trying to turn off the recorder. Doesn't have.